Well, we were talking earlier about the situation worsening on the border with Lebanon and Israel. Now, we're going to look in depth at the leader of the Islamist group Hezbollah, Hassan Nasrallah. He's addressing supporters in the coming hours. Fears it could mean troops from Hezbollah are entering the conflict, meaning Israel's fighting on two fronts. Well, our guest on Perspective has been analysing Nasrallah's speeches over the years and claims while he's a key player... We shouldn't overstate his influence. Filippo Dionigi is a senior lecturer in international relations at the University of Bristol and author of the book Hezbollah, Islamist Politics and International Society. I mentioned, Filippo, you've analysed speeches by the leader over the years. From your reading of him, do you get a sense of what we could expect today? Um, look, it's difficult to say because all options are clearly on the table. And as your reporters were saying, the situation is moving very fast. Uh, but uh, roughly, you know, if we look at uh, uh, the kind of uh, rhetoric that Nasrallah has used for the past 20 years, we know there are uh, certain key concepts, certain, certain key values that uh, uh, Nasrallah regularly uh, articulates in his uh, speeches. Uh, so concepts like uh, resistance, martyrdom, of course, uh, the regional role of Hezbollah, uh, the definition of Israel as an existential threat and an enemy, and reference to the Lebanese as uh, its audience, but also the rest of the region as an audience, will be core elements uh, of this speech, uh, inevitably. Uh, if I may, I think, you know, what we can uh, reasonably expect from uh, this speech is that we're probably going to see uh, um, Hezbollah and Nasrallah uh, jumping on the bandwagon of Hamas uh, and glorify the brutal attack of uh, October 7 uh, and uh, describing it as an achievement for the resistance, uh, which is something that has been already anticipated by previous declaration of Hezbollah, of course. I think um, Nasrallah will make the most of this speech to, uh, again, glorify martyrdom. As uh, as your reporters were saying a few minutes ago, uh, um, Hezbollah has, has lost about 40 to 50 fighters, apparently, already uh, in this conflict with uh, uh, Israel, uh, which it means that it will uh, need, again, to celebrate their memory and their actions. Uh, and this is typically what happens also uh, in Nasrallah's speeches. I think this is also another important opportunity for Nasrallah. Uh, if you think of it for the past uh, 10 years or so, even more, uh, resistance has meant something different from what is the natural uh, vocation of Hezbollah as, as an actor in the region, because resistance was yeah. used as a concept to frame uh, action in Syria and Iraq. Instead, at this point, the re-ignition of the Arab-Israeli conflict means that, we, that resistance means again the fight against Israel. So Nasrallah will use this speech to once again frame resistance within this uh, historical and political context. One thing that I know you've, you've briefed about before is to say, despite this, despite the risk that he clearly has a big influence base, the size of Hezbollah and beyond, we shouldn't over -influence, uh, overstate his influence potentially because... It could actually be driven by factors on the ground, not necessarily the rhetoric of the Hezbollah leader. Yeah, let me let me be clear, let me be uh, clearer on this. Um, I think Nasrallah is is an influential regional figure. There is there is no question about this. Uh, it has leadership. It it has it has been uh, for a long time uh, a credible political leader for its own for his own supporters uh, at least, uh, and a formidable enemy for 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 Israel as well. By the way, um, but what I think is important is that what discourse does uh, in politics is to give meaning and significance actions, right? What will really escalate or, uh, the conflict, if it will happen, uh, is, is the actions on the ground. So if we witness actually um, an escalation in uh, intensity and in the type of weaponry that is used against Israel, then at that point, Israel will react in a different way and we, uh, we may then witness an escalation in military terms. But it will not the speech itself that will escalate the conflict. The speech will give meaning, justify the conflict, will rationalize it, we make it, uh, we'll explain it to Hezbollah's audience, and 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 it will be also an opportunity for Hezbollah to issue greater threats to Israel, to to exacerbate its sense of vulnerability, uh, yeah. so that. Uh, 
so that it will make it uh, so that it will increase the sense of insecurity of Israel in that sense. So speech was does one thing, but the reality on the ground is is how the fight goes, and that's what really matters. That's what really produces escalation. For those watching, it's complicated geopolitical um, ramifications and tectonic plates shifting to get a sense of Hamas in Gaza, um, it, understanding that you're backed by Iran, Hezbollah, backed by Iran. Now, you've studied, written about Hezbollah. Just Can you give us a brief potted history on the group, its inception, its influence, its current status within Lebanon as well? Well, um, it's it's a complicated picture, as you were saying. Um, Hezbollah is certainly a, a political and military actor that benefits from the support of Iran. It always did, uh, historically. Then progressively has grown and has become regionally influent up to an extent uh, that many at this point describe the relationship between Hezbollah and Iran, not simply that of uh, a, a patron client or a proxy actor, but more as a, a form of partnership almost between equal or anyway something that is agreed between uh, both actors in, in, a, in, in their mutual interest, not simply as you know one direction Iran-Hezbollah relationship in that sense. Um, on top of this, I think also it's important to consider the fact that, uh, um, you know, armed uh, non-state actors, they're not like states, in fact. They need to legitimize their use of force in the eyes of, uh, uh, of, of their public, of their supporters. If they don't have that legitimacy, uh, for example, uh, if they act against the interest of their own supporters, um, their use of force uh, seems uh, illegitimate, and therefore they're accused of being criminals, terrorists, and so on and so forth. Well, Hezbollah had a rough time recently in doing so, yeah. uh, and Lebanon is in a very uh, um, is in a devastating economic and political situation, and the Lebanese really don't want to be dragged into a major conflict more than they want, than they are now, which makes Hezbollah politically uh, in a difficult position. Militarily, they're strong, but politically. Politically, they are, uh, uh, they are they are facing challenges. That's a of good course. point, actually, Philippe. I just want to briefly final point as well. Actually, that could be something that curbs potentially Nasrallah's speech today. The rhetoric, the fact that, as we know, uh, we've reported many times, the Lebanese economy um, in a dire situation at the moment. The governmental situation is dire. If they could be blamed by Lebanese for worsening the stability of the country, is that a factor in this as well? That you're right. You're right, Gavin. I mean, the, the the situation of Lebanon cannot be overstated for its uh, uh, dramatic nature, really. Uh, which it means again that Nasrallah will have to use this speech also to um, somehow justify and and show somewhat the, the necessity, quote unquote, the existential. Uh, threat that Israel may represent. He will claim that up until now, uh, um, Hezbollah has achieved the deterrence capacity against Israel and has prevented Israel from attacking Lebanon even more than what uh, it has done uh, so far. It has not done yet what uh, what it has done to Gaza, for example, right? So, so it will uh, again um, uh, frame the situation in those terms. Yeah. But it's true, the situation, uh, the domestic situation of Lebanon, uh, it's probably a reason for self-containment uh, and restraint for Hezbollah to act, which is probably why also uh, we haven't seen uh, yet. A, a, a major escalation. Although, again, all options are on the table, and and the, the past the events in the past few hours are uh, are pointing to the direction of of at least a progressive increase in tensions. We'll Filippo, see. we'll see. A good point to to end on for now. Filippo Dionigi, senior lecturer of international relations at the University of Bristol and author of the book Hezbollah: Islamist Politics and International Society.